this figure sat along with two kids from a friend in Switzerland. The front illustration shows four German soldiers at rest. They're eating, or beim Essen fassen, as we say. These figures were also part of the Otomi Appeal Kitchen. Two sides show the soldiers' faces. On one side we can see things like bread, a sausage and a wine bottle. The last side depicts the usual infantry accessories. It also states the year when this kit was released, 1984. So we're going to look at some soldiers from the Stone Age of figure sculpting. The back of the box is the instruction sheet. It would also give us some information on the uniforms if it wasn't in Japanese. Now let's take a look at what's inside the box. There are two small sprues, one with all the parts for the figures and one with the food supplies and infantry stuff. All parts have a seam line that needs to be removed. The molds are old and it's quite normal that they don't close as tightly as new ones. Other companies are doing worse with new toolings. The figures first. All parts are labelled with a letter and a number, so the instructions aren't really necessary. Figure A is the one who's sitting on the chair and cutting off slices of bread. The uniform details are rather soft compared to what we're used to find on newer figures. There are folds, and they don't look too bad and will surely pop after washing some highlighting. What I say now goes for all four figures in this set. Yes, they all have a face, but let's face it, it would be impossible to use these figures along with, let's say, Masterbox figures. The differences are too big. They're not really bad, but they're not to today's standard. Here we also find the wine bottles. No clear parts, and I don't know if I'll use them. Figure B is the one sitting on the floor and offering a cigarette to one of his comrades. As you can see, the details are as soft as on figure A. I mentioned it in one of my recent reviews on mini art figures. The art of sculpting figures has come a long way. Back in the 1980s it was impossible to do them that way. Here are the bayonets with only basic details. If I use them I'll do some detailing on them. Figure C is one of two standing figures. He's the one with the loads of bread. What I like most about him is that he's got one hand in his pocket. Cleaning up hands is one thing I don't enjoy. And here we see something I can remember very well. All standing to me are figures of that era don't have heels on their boots. Since there are heels on the previous figures, I don't have the slightest clue why Tamiya did this. It looks weird and I'll do something about it. Last figure. He's the one who's eating. And he's the only one with a bit of flesh. This is a nice detail. I don't mean the flesh on the spoon. I'm talking about the stew or soup or whatever it might be. A detail like that, but no heels. That strap for the gas mask case has got to go. It looks silly the way it is molded to the contours of his back. And now for the accessories. The chair consists of four parts and has some nice looking wood grain. A chair is something you can always use. Sausages look like, well, sausages. The pants rim is too thick and needs to be sanded down a bit to look realistic. The field cap isn't really well detailed and I really doubt that I'll use it. Two open maskets are a nice idea but can also use some extra detailing. While we have two different loaves of bread, all pouches look identically. I think I've got some in my scrap box, so I'll replace two of them in case I'll use all figures on one dio. The helmets look nice. The screw gates sit in a position that makes it difficult not to damage the helmet's rims. You want to be careful when you're cutting them off the sprue and cleaning them up. Gas mask cases, mask kit and canteens are pretty basic. I can't use them the way they come, not after I saw what can be done to make them look realistic. If you don't know this channel, please check it out. The guy is nuts, mad, insane, crazy, but he's an exquisite modeler. As 
usual, I won't give a conclusion for a kit I haven't built yet. That wouldn't be as professional as I try to be. Given that the figures have the usual excellent fit we're used to, there won't be any problems. Since I don't know if that's the case, I'll tell you after I build them. I built many figures like these in the 1980s and 1990s because there weren't any better ones available, in Styrene. After I built my first Berlin and Resin figures, I didn't want to touch Tamiya or Italeri figures anymore. The Dragon figures of that era weren't much better. Still, I built these chaps here and tried to pimp them a bit. Decapitation day will come. Thanks to my friend Pete, I've got a couple of real nice German resin heads I can use to replace these. <laughs> 